Mike Messier. Welcome to Messier Mantra. On this episode, we have a very special return guest. He's a motivational speaker, and his name is Aaron Wilson. Aaron. How's it going? <laughs> Another toast. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> With H2O. Are you a big water drinker? Yes, and yeah. it's so important. I'm trying to drink lots more of it. Yeah. Honestly. Less juice, more water. Yeah, because for me, um, you know, growing up, it was a lot of uh, soda. Soda. Yeah, Kool-Aid and, and just crazy <laughs> stuff, you know what I mean? And just yeah. like a lot of, you know, probably things we don't think about back in that time, but now we think about more as we get older, like corn syrup, sugar, um, all that stuff that's not good for, for us. You. But when you're a kid, sometimes it's just the easiest thing to grab. To grab. It's just like horrible, you know, but... Um, is diet and nutrition something you think about too? Yes, definitely, especially in the field that I'm in because just the traveling and the long hours at night, you definitely have to be healthy, eating healthy, exercising, and then also the acting and the modeling. And so you, you definitely want to you wanna be your best because you're putting your best foot forward. You're meeting people, you have TV show appearances, and you just want to, you know, to, we want to sustain, right? We want to be, we want to take care of our bodies. So it's definitely a big plus for me. And one thing with that, uh, towards that end, we're kind of going on a tangent from the get-go. We'll get <laughs> yeah. back to the moment. When you're exercising on a regular basis, uh, I would think that it helps you with your energy rather than, you know, yes. people might say, well, if I lift weights, then I'm going to be tired. That's, yeah. But That's it's really, a, yeah. It's a lie. You know, it's like, right. it, you know, you have to get out of that mindset because when I did go to the gym, like when I do go to the gym earlier, it's after I'm just so ready, I'm so ener energized for the day, so... It's really good. It's doing your body justice when you work out and set that time aside. Yeah, and we were talking about on uh, off camera before. Like you had an experience, I think last summer, mm -hmm. where you're doing your, um, you know, day job, which was uh, where yeah, I used to work at a bank as the community education trainer. Right, yep. and then on top of that, you were working uh, on a movie, yeah. doing some work on yeah. the Ghostbusters film yeah. in Boston. So. And it was just yeah, it was. <laughs> so I had to, I worked. My my full time job from eight thirty in the morning till five p.m. and then I had to be on set at five thirty p.m. all the way till six in the morning and do that for two weeks. So I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, and I I remember I bought one of those five hour energy oh, drinks. No. <laughs> I know. And then like I was re going and, and I was leaving, and my mom's like, you're not gonna start doing those, right? I'm like, no, mom. <laughs> it's just one. <laughs> I'm not gonna get hooked. On I know, right? I was like, no, mom. I'll just it's just one, but no. It was it was tough. Like yeah. there was no going to the gym. There was there was barely you know my life during right. those weeks was dedicated to that amazing film. So yeah, the film industry is interesting because they'll have these crazy overnight shifts, and you know if they have to use a location, say a museum, and yeah. the museum's open for the general public during the day, and they want to use this museum, they have to use it overnight. Overnight, which means the crew's got to work over the night. Overnight, the cast yeah. and, and the background actor. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a real quick funny story is that. I was uh, brought in to do extra work, you know, background acting in uh, the movie Ted, you know, Mark okay, Wahlberg nice. and awesome. the, the stuffed animal doll. And so they had us in the Boston Aquarium. And so I'm driving up there from Rhode Island to Boston. And I, I think I didn't even have a GPS at the time. So I'm driving up there. <laughs> like, and where there's, do I go? <laughs> there's the Bruins are playing an uh, elimination oh. playoff game. I think the Boston Red Sox were playing a home game. And I don't. I guess the Celtics were not in town. So it was just the Bruins and the Red Sox at the exact time I had to get there, like 5.30 at night. You know what I mean? Like, and, everyone, and then my car's running out of gas, and I'm thinking, no. okay, I'm driving to Boston. There's going to be some one of those uh, pullover you know, gas station mm -hmm. convenience stops, and there's none. So I literally got into Boston. I got so nervous because I couldn't find the, the uh, extras parking or whatever. So I pulled over and I called AAA to get me some gas because I was so nervous. I got to set like an hour and a half late. They were a little upset with me, but they got over it. And then um, we're doing this whole crazy shoot in this aquarium, the Boston Aquarium for Ted, for the movie mm -hmm. Ted. And then we finally take our dinner break at like three or four in the morning, right? So we're walking through the aquarium. We're smelling all these crazy fish and like <laughs> whales and stuff and like octopus. We get to our dinner break and what do you think they're serving? I'm serving fish, and I'm like, I can't Are eat you. you. Serious? <laughs> I know, right? Not, not in your home. Like, I can't eat Sammy the salmon. I just like, I'm just like chilling out with your cousin over I here, know, right? the octopus. You know, I'm not gonna, 
I'm not gonna eat them. But that's that just is a little so, funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's just a weird industry that, that the entertainment's in. It is. But uh, getting back to to you and uh, everything that you're doing. So we talked about your acting career mm -hmm. and moving forward. And tell us about the modeling, because we didn't talk about that last time. Yeah, it's so funny. I would I would have never thought you know taking a selfie pic would land me this. No, but yeah. no, but seriously, no. With the modeling, that's a whole other because. When I look back at it, the only thing that actually got me into really like going after modeling was one of the agencies I was working with. I actually connected the, to them through my music and through, and then they said, "Aaron, you have a good look. You can do commercial print and acting." And so I really, you know, it inspired me to look into that also. But even the modeling, it's not something where you just go and take a picture. It right. is like it's this is this is this thing of stepping out of my comfort zone of which i've seen is even though the photographers it's a work of art like right. i have so much respect for them even visually putting together stuff like i'll be on a, a set and the photographer is more excited than i am i'm like what they're like <laughs> no 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 dude we found it like and it was a, it, it was amazing i'll never forget a couple of years ago i went to this you know set for it was one of those like um athletic type of jump in the air and ah, like, right. you know, almost like a Nike or Gatorade. And I went there and I didn't know how the, in, these industry people or these people trying out were gonna be, I was new to it. But they were so cool. The other people auditioning, they were like, hey, what's up, what's going on? Like, it was just, it was awesome. It was just like playing like, you know, basketball with your friends or football. Right. It was just so relaxed and it was just an awesome experience. And it really changed my mind like, wow, this is, like, you know, it really just brought me into a whole other world. So now I do like, I do like just commercial prints. So I'll do like an athletic, you know, modeling campaign or like say like a tux wear, you right. know, and even, even that it just really, it really brought in my horizons of where this can go and the acting and the modeling, all those creative sides, then it's networking, it's relationship building. Every single where I go, Mike, I meet someone and we just have an, a great conversation in all those fields. That's nice. And you know who's really underrated in some of these things is like the crew, you know, like yeah. for even photography, you know, um, tell me about some of those folks. Yeah, so. there, it's, people need to understand that what you finally see, uh, the final product of anything, there's a lot of work that goes behind that. Right. Even lead the baseline and everything I'm doing, like there's work that goes behind that. Even, even my clothes, like, right, you know, right. like this is from Kingswear, which is an excellent, uh, excellent um, tailor shop in, in Brockton, Massachusetts. Will, who actually like all my suits I got from there. He imports them from Italy. They're amazing. But even like putting this together, like he helped me do, he helps me do that with all my suits and just even realizing like the history of suits and and just seeing his passion for suit, like it just it made me think like wow like this is not just a piece of clothing this right. is his passion you know so even those side things there's a whole there's a there's a backing there's a team behind everything and just we have to respect everybody even if we just don't see them you know so going back to that question like the crew is the most important part i think we were talking before you can have a final product but the editing right the editing like you know the editing is one of the most important in crucial and tedious task there is. Yeah, for video and film, it's because the editor has to sit there with these hours and hours of footage and like, okay, this shot, this shot, you know, the segues and, mm -hmm. the, you know, all types of stuff. So that's good. And going back to the modeling uh, and the, you know, photography, mm -hmm. um, I would think like the hair and makeup, the um, lighting folks, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. You yeah. know, if there's a fashion person working yeah. with the model, you know. I was just like, and that's funny, I just had a, um, a commercial shoot a couple of days ago and it was it was hand modeling actually because I was doing a purchase and I had to like show my hand we had to do like this like I had a debit card I had to do so many takes yeah. but even before that they were like you need to have manicure I'm like uh -huh. what <laughs> a guy needs the manicure but they were like Aaron this is the industry like because right. I thought like oh whatever they just wanted regular hands no like even if like they wanted you know you everyone had to do that so it's just it's a, like you said it's a it's a whole it's a different industry but it, it, it's fun I think there was an episode of Seinfeld years ago where like the guys were in like you know, oven mitts, like the hand model guys, or something like that. But, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's great. So tell yeah. me, I was just talking about um, what I wanted to ask you was when you're working with the kids, you're mm -hmm. doing the motivational speaking, yeah. going back to that, and you're working with some of these kids, I'm guessing eighth grade to 12th grade? Exactly, yep. So are these kids, 
I'm just going to go out there and say, are these kids like in a depressed state, confused? Are they antisocial because they've got all the technology? Mm -hmm. To be well, honestly, to be honest with you, it's all it's, it's a mix. Yeah. So when you go into a room, like it really depends because I did all types of kids. We probably reached over 300 and each one has something different or maybe a learning disability or not not only that, they could just be a regular, you know, just a nor like a high school and I'm coming in. But each one is, you know, it's all on an individual basis. You know, these right. kids, even even what we know, like they could have a certain issue, but we don't know what's going behind the scenes. You know, there's other barriers or there's other things that these kids are working on. That's why to go in these workshops and just, you know, bring my two cents or just to bring this teaching is just amazing because to see the change and to see the hope in these students' eyes right away right. is it just blows my mind and I'm so blessed to have that opportunity. And also on a, a lot of circumstances, I, wor I didn't just work w with these kids once. I actually worked with them for a couple of months. So I actually was able to see this program and see what Lead the Baseline did. Not, oh, hi, right. be motivated, bye. No, I seen these students become leaders within like weeks, right. you know, cause they, and you know why? It wasn't because I kept, I was motivating them, but I actually gave them practical advice where they felt the point where I can trust them. I can trust Aaron and this information is the truth and let me start applying it in my life. And that's the thing that makes the key difference. That's the thing that changes people because what we're ultimately doing with Lead the Baseline is we're not having this treasure in carrying it for ourselves. We're letting people like share this wisdom, share this knowledge, knowledge that they can access it for themselves and then spread it. That's what it is. It's really a movement. Now, Lead the Baseline, where does that uh, name come from? <laughs> That's funny. So my mentor, Alan Dagba, one day we are in the office and he said, Aaron, did you think of your business name yet? And me, I was like, no, but I'll give it to you next week. He's like, Aaron, you already know it. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, it's inside of you. So he like, he, I went in the office, he shut me in the room. He's like, think about it. I'm going to go upstairs, do some filings and stuff. Let me know when you're done. And I'm sitting there like, what is this guy? <laughs> like, who does that? It felt right. like Karate Kid, one right. of those. He's, yeah, seriously, I'm like, what do I do? But then I really, I'm like, I put out a pen and paper and I sat there and I'm like, what do I want to call my business? And right. I had these names, scratched them out. And then I just remember see, me writing lead, like as leadership and the baseline before you start anything you start at the solid rock you sat okay. you sat you start at the foundation you know so you start at the foundation then i heard like the bass and then the music oh baseline so everything started to come together and then like and then that's when i realized lead the baseline having a solid rock even in the bible i know they talk build your land on rock oh, yeah. other than sand solid rock so everything at that moment and I was like, this is the name. And I, I brought it to Alan. I'm like, Alan. And he's like, that's it. Nice. Now I got baseline. two things I want to ask you about. Mm -hmm. So now you said your, your mom uh, was involved in the church? When yeah, she, yeah, and they both still are. She does biblical counseling. So oh, wow. she has people come to the house and she helps them um, with biblical counseling and just really help, helping people. That's another thing. My mom, since she was younger, always had that heart to help people. And that's tough, too, because yeah. you come, you know, I'm, I'm just imagining, but folks from the church or the community might be coming to her and they're going through a tough time with their marriage or their mm -hmm. kids acting up or they're acting up. They yeah. have some issue that mm -hmm. they're having a real trouble. And your mom, uh, you know, God bless her because she's helping these Thank people, you. but that Thank might you. take an emotional drain on her. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and the same thing with teaching as well, too. Like my dad, he's in a, he all like one thing I know growing up, like he worked so hard. They both did, but my, like he worked so hard and he always kept a smile on his face and he was always good to his family, you know, and I'll never forget that. So thank you, dad, you know, yeah. like he worked so hard and like, I admire that, you know, but it does teaching and, you know, inspiring other people or doing that. It does take a toll. Even my mentor, like I see, like, you know, we're humans, we get tired, you know? Right. And that's one of the things, even for myself, that when I started, you know, doing this, you can get tired sometimes. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what do you do? And then, and I remembered a verse and it said, um, I forget the exact words, but it said basically along the lines of, um, God will take away our burdens or we can rest in, you know? And right. when I thought about that, I really, I like the stress started to go away, That's you nice. know? So we just have to, we have to remember like, 
under the whole works and under construction, but we have to, like you said before, we have to give ourselves a break. Right. You know, when, can, like, I love how you said, Aaron, is there a time when you just, <laughs> and no, and it, it, yeah. it's really important. That's what I have to remind myself. Like, yes, we're on the hustle and the grind, but we need to also take that time to decompress, meditate, like, just relax and do something fun. Now, um, I was, wow, I got a lot of things to talk about. <laughs> I was, just as a quick thing before I forget, like, sometimes I think about, you know, we're always uh, pushing ourselves for self-improvement mm -hmm. or, you know, someone might say, I want to lose weight or I want to, you know, get off this addiction or something or I want to spend more time mm -hmm. with my family. Yeah. We always do that type of thing. But then the other side of it, you know, it's kind of like this, like there's that motiva that self-imposed motivation, like I got to do better, I got to do better. I gotta... And then there's that other thing where like, hey, give myself a break because I am doing okay and I just kind of need to nurture myself and give myself... You know, so it's almost like a, a yin and yang thing, mm -hmm. like the, the pushing yourself as opposed to, or maybe in conjunction with rewarding yourself exactly. and giving yourself a break. So mm -hmm. something I mentioned. That's, a, that's huge. Yeah. But I was interested, uh, we go back to your family real quick. So, so you kind of grew up with this nice uh, family upbringing of your dad and your mom being very uh, generous people mm -hmm. with their time Definitely. and their efforts. So that was great, you know. Do you have siblings or were you? Yes, I do. So I have two two brothers and two sisters. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. Well, full house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, let's get into your music because mm -hmm. we didn't really talk about your music yeah, in the last definitely. episode. So tell me about what's going on. Yeah, so I'm excited because this weekend, and you're obviously, of course, you're invited. So it's the second, my second music video, I Hear the Future, and it's premiering this Saturday. Nice. So I'm super excited, and this song is literally about things we are talking about, going after your dream, not letting fears or anxiety or anything hold you back. And it's also introducing Lead the Baseline. So nice. it's really introducing me, like playing this character, but me just, you know, had enough of, you know, the everyday, okay, this is a system, you're a robot. No, I had enough of it. I'm going after my dream at all costs. So that's what the song is about. Yes. Okay. And you're mm -hmm. the singer of the song? Yes. Okay, nice. And you, did you direct the video too? No. I had a director, Chris Esper. Oh, yeah. Amazing. I know Chris. You know it, Chris? Yeah. I know Chris amazing. Well. So amazing director, Chris Esper. And then I also had dancers in the video that are they're their own characters, and you'll see it in the video. They come alive. Es so quick shout out, Esperon, Leah, and Katarina. Like they were just amazing. So working with this team and just it was a huge team. Like Everybody involved, talk about behind the scenes. Like, I like to look at everybody like they're not behind the scenes. Everybody's on the scenes because they really just brought this a vision that I had together. Talk about dream and goal setting. Before this video even came into play, I had like a board, like I bought from Walmart, and I actually posted on like di the board different things that would happen in this, you know, possibility of a video. Right. And to see it come into fruition is just amazing. That's awesome. Very cool, man. Very cool. So, um, we talked about in the last episode some of the goal setting mm -hmm. exercises. Yeah. What are some other exercises that you do yourself and that you motivate and you educate the kids about? Like, is there other exercises? Definitely. There's this one that we do in the workshop on confidence and self respect that we do. And I ask them, I ask the students, I give them a piece of paper and I, I ask them, write down what, what do you think when you think of yourself? Like, so what, what's, the, what's the initial thoughts that come to your head? Good or bad, write them down on the sheet of paper. And they write them down, and then I ask them to evaluate. Can you separate? Is there good, or is there bad? And usually there's, you know, some good things, but then some bad things. And I'm like, next to the bad things, write who said that about you. Or mm. write, so a lot of these kids will have failure or, you know, ugly or you can't, I'm not good enough. And then, I'm, and then when you hear the names, you're hearing family members, teachers, friends. And I'm, you know, so we talk right. about that. And at that moment, I say, you know what? Don't hold on to those words anymore. Forgive those people, you know? Let those words go. Right. And it's a really exercise that even as adults, we need to do. How, how many stuff are we carrying from when we are younger? You know? Yeah. How many words are we carrying that's not who we are? You know, we have to throw those words out because they're literally trash and we need to build ourselves up and affirm ourselves with who we really are. We're wonderful, we're powerful, we're successful. Those are the words that should we be carrying around. And it's a process, it's affirmations. I'm even trying to work on myself doing it more because when I do do it, I'm like, yes, yes, you know, but it's a habit, you know? We should be waking up in the morning, going in the mirror and saying, looking at ourselves and saying this before we start our day, you know? Because once mm. we get in the world, there's a, there's a lot of stuff we're dealing with, you know? 
One thing so we have to build yeah. ourselves up. One thing I, uh, to cut you off, sorry, but. Yeah, no, no, no good. You made me think, like, in the human brain, the mind, the spirit, there's so much negativity flowing and flowing, mm -hmm. and not even flowing, but like a roller coaster and jagged knives of thoughts. Yes, and just, exactly. We think about, like, oh, man, I don't look so good today. I got this zit. Isn't or, it know, horrible? Looking, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, uh, and then, like you said, the uh, family, the friends, the so-called friends, the teachers, yeah, and the, you know. Like, they affirm it. It's, it's, you're, it's like you're sinking your own ship. Right. People just give you a hard time, and it's like, and then you go, uh, you know, for me, I go to these coffee houses quite a bit, and, like, the new thing with the coffee houses is, oh, they're playing, like, the high-def TV in there, you know, and, like, just... It's kind of interesting because back in the old days, like they wouldn't have TVs in the coffee house. No talk. You know, now they got like the TVs blaring. It's like, what do they have on? Well, they have the CNN or the Fox News or the local news. And it's like, you watch the news and you know it's just negative stuff. Negative stuff. Right. The wars, the murders, the political debates. And so by the end of the day, between our own crazy thoughts, our own negative thoughts, what people are saying to us, and then this world in general, that's a madhouse. How are we supposed to be happy? Like how, how are we you supposed know? to? It's we're getting pulled in so many different directions. And I guess that's the thing. We, we kind of let the, whether it's social media or our jobs or what we kind of let these things, we kind of put our lives in those hands when we have the power to not, like even with our thoughts, right. we have the power to control our thoughts. We, you know, and it's really taking back that initiative, taking back that power, you know, and owning it. Yeah. Where do you see, see yourself in five years from now? Yeah. Oh, wow. In five years? It's not too I see, far away. <laughs> it isn't. I know it isn't. I honestly, in five years, I see Lead the Baseline across U.S. and also the world. Okay. Really, just these programs and people going out to do these trainings as well, spreading this message. I see me personally married because, okay. you know, sure. see me married, f few kids on the way possibly, okay. see me married to a beautiful woman, and then... Also, I, I really see my music career starting to really, my songs really starting to impact and inspire people and just really come alive. And then also, who knows, I see myself on an amazing movie. Okay. You know, maybe alongside Mike. I <laughs> hope so, Yeah, man. no, definitely. No, <laughs> seriously, <me> <laughs> seriously. But that's what I really see. And I just, and throughout this process, I just see me being thankful, loving on people and helping people and just encouraging them, inspiring them, letting them know they can do it too. Is there a particular uh, film director or an actor or an actress that you'd like to work with at some point? Oh my gosh, there's so many, there's so many. I, um, that one. I know, right? I'm like, ah, who? <laughs> Mate, possibly Denzel Washington, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Tom Cruise, who's yep. amazing. I, uh, just watching his movie. Um, Kristen Wiig, she's oh, yeah, hilarious. Funny, yeah. Sandra Bullock, like there's so many, oh, there, yeah. Well, what's cool is some of these actors, just, well, I know that Sandra Bullock and uh, Denzel mm -hmm. Washington have both worked in the Boston area. Yeah, the last oh, of years. I have a funny story about that. Yeah, please, let's hear <laughs> yeah. it. So, so Sandra Bullock, so long time ago. <laughs> so this is hilarious. But um, so we went to this lounge place, me and my friends, a couple years back. And we got there. I was so ready. I was so excited to go. And we went in, and they were just like, oh, you guys, you have to go to the other room over there. We're like, why not the main room? We're like, that's where the, the, the lounge is. They're like, no, they're filming a movie. And right. I'm like, oh. so I'm just like, whatever. So I actually walk up, and they're like, Aaron, where are you going? I'm like, no, like, I want to see what's going on. Like, and so I literally walk in the room, walk on set, almost bump into Sandra Bullock wow. while they're filming, like, this cocktail scene of right. the movie The Heat or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just like, it was hilarious. And so, like, literally <laughs> I'm there, and I'm like, and like, pe and then I take a, I take like a glass, and I'm just like, trying to mix in the crowd, and it was just, it was so embarrassing, but it's hilarious. Like I'll never forget that story. That's so funny. That yeah. was my, that was literally my first cameo into this acting. Scene. That's great. That's great. But, yeah. Oh, you kind of did it. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. that's funny. Well, we it was awesome. We won't tell the union. I know, right? <laughs> no. That's great. That's great because, uh, yeah, she's a very powerful actress. That was uh, Sandra Bullock and Ms. Melissa McCarthy, I think, mm -hmm. with it. So. Uh, so once again, we're gonna ask you uh, about a mantra. Now, I got, in the last episode, you had a really good mantra, and now, do you have another one for this episode? Hmm, yes, <laughs> I'm trying to think. What, where do you want, like, yes. The last one, I said, awaken the leader in you. Yeah, that was good, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll do this one. This one is, every leader starts at the baseline. Okay, okay. Every leader starts at the baseline. Right. The foundation. Yeah. Have to have a foundation point. 
And that's, it's interesting because I think it's tough for a lot of people. Like, it I is, think it's it is tough. Tough for people who maybe come from a divorced family or they come from a situation where they had some type of learning disability or they had lack of confidence or they had um, situations in their family growing up or maybe, you know, they, you know, a, a good friend of mine was uh, raised in an orphanage and then, mm -hmm. he, you know, so I mean, I think a lot of people, even the baseline is something they have to work on. They have to work on and that's, and that's what I'm doing now. I do that every day. I think that's, that's the main thing, working on that baseline. Yeah. Where are you grounded? You nice. know, what is your support system? What do you, um, we have a couple of minutes left. Mm -hmm. Time flies when we talk. I know, right? I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> is there anything uh, people can do? Uh, so I'm assuming Lead the Baseline has a .com or something? Yes, so I, I love how you say that. So tomorrow we're actually working on the, we're actually working on the website. So right now it's, everything's through AaronKWilson.com, but that's kind of features me as everything. Yes. Like, you know, the acting, but LeadTheBaseline.com, it's, you know, corporate and it's entity. That will be working on, so that will be up soon. So leadthebaseline.com, you guys will be able to see that by the time this airs, yes. Nice, and so when um, when people think about Aaron Wilson on the Messier Mantra, what do you want them to remember? What's the takeaway from these two episodes? The takeaway is I want you to remember that you're a leader, you know, and to be the leader of your life, what do you want to do? You know, what do you want to go after? What dream have you been, you know, bouncing around in your head for the last couple of years, you know? And if you're already walking in that dream, I want to encourage you, keep going. Right. Whether in you're in the field of leadership, acting, modeling, dancing, whatever field it is, it's going to take work. And that's one of the things every successful person I came in contact with had to work, had to grind, had a great support system. But I just, said, I just encourage you, keep going. If they take any way from the, this interview, just, just know that we're here, you're here for a purpose and that you can do it. Yeah. You truly, truly can do it. Nice, because it's not over unless you quit, really. It's not over unless you quit, and that's another thing. Failure is success inside out. If you fall, like, you know, when you fail, you can learn something from that. Don't be afraid to fall down. Don't be afraid to mess up. Right. Don't, you know? Get back up and learn from it. Nice. So, it's just a lot of, a lot of things we talked about. And uh, just, just probably have you on again in a few yeah, months. Yeah, definitely. This is an up. amazing show, definitely. I would, and hopefully you stay in contact because you're inspiring, like I said well, before. I <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, Aaron, I mean, it's just so many cool things are going on with you and uh, Lead the Baseline, the Thank organization, so and working with those kids. I think that's, to me, that's so uh, inspiring uh, what you're doing. Because Thank you. These kids, you know, and they're the future of our country, of the world, and, and they need people like yourself to just thank reach you so out much to for them. That. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. So, um, just got a few seconds left, and I once again thank our mutual friend Gina Madison. Thank you so much, Gina. <laughs> I hope to see you soon. <laughs> like, you well, know. you know, it's cool. I'll give you know the Facebook give it the Facebook take it away because I put out a little thing, you know, looking for a guest on the show yeah. and a motivational guest, and here you are. And wow, see, yeah, that's amazing. So for she all the trouble it. that you know Facebook <laughs> causes with the, the threads and the flame wars, you know, mm -hmm. there is good to come out of it. There this. is good coming out of it. Wow, okay, that's awesome. man. Thanks, Aaron Cheers. Wilson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for watching another great episode of Messier Mancha with our special guest, Aaron Wilson. I want to invite you to check out the next Messier Mancha.